The module pattern is one of the most important patterns in JavaScript. And in this tutorial, we are going to dive into the traditional module pattern. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. In dealing with modules, I'm going to be talking about the traditional module pattern that has been used for years in JavaScript. This is a topic I cover in depth in my advanced topics course if you're interested. Now, I'm not going to talk about modules that became a part of vanilla JavaScript with ECMAScript 6. That is a topic for another day. We also won't be looking at how modules are handled by Node.js. You can view a playlist I put together on that, which I will link to in the description. We are going to look at the module pattern that has been part of JavaScript for years. You will surely encounter it at some point. The purpose of this pattern is to create self-contained code that avoids collisions. Let's first look at the advantages of a module. So first off, I mentioned a module avoids collisions. This is referred to as namespacing. Now in JavaScript, global variables are available all over and can be written by other code or for people working on the same project. And so the idea of avoiding collisions is avoiding the creation of variables that could collide with a variable of the same name that someone else has created in that same space. So creating a module helps to avoid those problems so that we can use any variable we want in our code and we don't have to worry about whether that variable is unique enough or not. Now the second advantage is reusability. Well-written modules are easier to reuse. You can take that module, that piece of code, and you can plug it in because a well-written module is self-contained. You don't have to make adjustments for the code you're putting it in or make adjustments to the module itself. And then finally, maintainability. A module is also easier to maintain. And that's because, as mentioned, a module is decoupled from all the other code that may be a part of the project. So you can easily go update that. You don't have to worry about those updates affecting code somewhere else in the project. Now, as we dive into the code for a module, there are some important JavaScript concepts that need to be understood in order to understand modules thoroughly. And namely, those are closure and scope. If you need to review those concepts, I'll link to those in the description. So first, we're going to take a look at some code that I've set up already. So you don't have to watch me type it in. I've created a function. Communication is what I've named this function. Inside of it, I've created two variables, a greet variable and a goodbye variable. So the idea is that this module is going to handle communication. And right now, all we're dealing with is greetings. So we have a greet and a goodbye variable. And then down here, we have a function that displays a greeting. It uses a string template to put the greeting together and display it to the console. Once again, if you're unfamiliar with string templates, I have a tutorial on that, which I will link to in the description. We also have a function up here. And this function gets the greeting message. And basically what it's doing is it's getting the date for the purpose of getting the time. Then it converts it to the local time string and then we just check to see if it includes AM. And if it includes AM, we replace greet with good morning. Otherwise, we stick with hello. So if they're logging in in the morning, we wanna say good morning instead of hello. So basically that's what we have here. Now, a module is a function and that's because a function has its own scope. So anything we create inside this function, 
we don't have to worry about collisions. We don't have to worry about it interfering with code outside of that function. So because of that scope, a function is a fantastic structure for a module, a self-contained piece of code. Now, the other advantage of using a function for a module is closure. A function creates closure. And so anything in this function we will have access to, even when the function is done, is finished, is no longer executing, we still have access to these variables and these functions because of closure. And so those two concepts make the structure of a function perfect for setting up a module, which is a set of self-contained code. All right, now as this is, it's not very usable. So for example, let me go out to the console here. I'm going to go back to that page and then go to the console. And then I can create a global variable and I can invoke the communication function and it will cause everything inside that function to be set up. However, I don't have access to it. I can't get to that stuff. There's no way I can use those. And let's say that I want to be able to use this function. These other things I'm going to keep private. These I want to keep inside the function and those won't be used outside of this function. They're just for the purpose of this module. And so I'm keeping everything inside of there. But this greeting function I want to be able to use. I need to be able to access it. So from code that's outside of this module, I want to be able to call the greeting function and have it print to the console, hello, so-and-so, welcome to the course. All right? That's just our simplified functionality for this. So how do I make this available outside of this function? Well, here's how we do that. We consider this is going to be a public function. And so to make it public, what we do is we return an object that contains this function. All right, let's look at that. So I would type return, and then here's my object. And then inside of the object, I set up anything that I want public. So I'm going to put a comment here. Public methods and properties. And so I want to make this public. And what name do I want to make it public with? I could use the same name, greeting, or I could use a different name. I'm going to use a different name. So I'm going to put greet user. That will be the public name to access this function. And so now I'm going to tie that to greeting, just like that. So this object is going to be returned. And so anything that I set up with this function will have access to this object, which will in turn give us access to this method. But we'll keep everything else private. All right, let's save that and go ahead and see how that works. So I'm going to refresh this so we have our new code. Oops, I got an error message. Oh, put a semicolon there instead of a colon. There we go. Save that. Refresh again. All right, now I'm going to do the same statement. Now this com variable, which is on the global space, this will have access to the greet user function. So now I can do a dot greet user. I can then pass in the name of the user that I'm currently working with. And there we get the greeting sent. And I'm recording this about 10 minutes before noon. And so we're getting good morning instead of hello. And so we've made a self-contained module. Now, right now, this could be used for multiple global variables, com, com1, com2, and so on. But many times, when the module pattern is used in JavaScript, it's used as a singleton. It's used only once. And so in order to facilitate that and make it easier to set up, 
we use an iffy, an immediately invoked function expression, to have it invoked immediately and set up immediately. So now I'm going to change this so that we use an iffy for that purpose. Once again, if you're unfamiliar with iffies, I have a tutorial on that which I'll link to in the description. So with an immediately invoked function expression, I can get rid of the function name because I can use an anonymous function for this. And then I can set up my global variable that is going to contain any public methods or properties that I want to provide from this module. And so this becomes the access to the module. That's what this is, the access to the module. Now I set up my iffy. I got to surround the whole thing in parentheses to make it valid. And then I need to invoke it. So these next set of parentheses invoke it. And what gets returned to this is this object right here, which then gives me access to the public parts of this module. And so this would only invoke once. Com would then be the API that would give me access to this module. See how that works? Let me go ahead and save that and we'll take a look at this again. So now I can just access COM anytime I need to do a communication. In this case, the only method I have right now in this module is greet user. And so that's the one I'm going to access. And that takes care of the greeting for me. So here we have a very simple module, very small. Most modules contain a lot more code than this. But this illustrates the idea of the module. And we've been able to create our code self-contained. Nothing in here is going to conflict with anything outside of this function. We avoid collisions. This is the only thing that is now on the global space that could collide. And there are ways to even prevent this from colliding. So we've been successful in creating this module. Before we are done here, please hit the like button. And remember, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. And the advanced topics course goes into modules in a lot of detail. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, there are additional benefits to certain levels. You can follow a link in the description for that. You can also contribute by visiting my website. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. Also click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right, visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for a complete list of tutorials and courses. Thanks for watching.